Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center and today we're talking about the Viking Opal 650. In this video, I'm going to show you the settings menu. Now over here on your operations panel, you have this little thing that looks like tools. That's your settings. So when we open that up, now I've already got it open, but to close it, you just simply press it a second time. So open it, close it. Okay, so we open it right there. We've got these various different things that you can adjust and you use your up and down arrow to get to whatever you want. You can step it along or you can just press and hold like that. Okay, let's go back up to the first one, fix. That means it's going to tie a little knot in your thread to start with. When you turn this on, it's gonna give you, like if you start sewing your regular straight stitch, it's gonna give you a little stitch in place which forms the knot and then it's going to keep sewing so that's what that means it's really useful to have when you're doing say a sequence of stitches or some lettering and you want to make sure you have that nice little knot at the beginning to keep your um, stitches from coming unstitched so you can have that on or off uh, and the okay is how you change that so let's go down to twin needle here now twin needle up here you have the two spool pins, your regular one and your auxiliary spool pin. You can have two spools of thread on here and do some beautiful effects, decorative effects using twin needles. This is what twin needles look like. You can have a wider one, even wider than this, a narrow one or even narrower than, the, than this and in, anything in between. Now these happen to have, like this says four on it, which means four millimeters. This is a 2.5, I know it's hard to see with the camera but um, that's showing the size, the distance between the two needles. So when you choose twin needle, you need to also, with these arrows, choose the size of needle. So if I was using the 2.5, that's what I would use. If I was using the four millimeter wide needle, then I would need to make this up to, there's four right there. So what that does is when this is on, if you're doing a zigzag or any decorative stitch, it will limit how wide the swing of that needle is. So that way, the needle will not hit your, your uh, needle plate or your foot. That's the purpose of that. Now, notice here also, I'm gonna point with my pencil, that the next one down, which is stitch, stitch with safety, is grayed out. You can't use that. So I'm gonna turn this off and now you can see that. So let's go down to stitch width safety. I'm gonna talk about that. That is if you have a particular foot that has just a single hole, straight stitch hole in it and not this nice wide zigzag hole or if you're using the needle plate that has the, the single hole in the center for only sewing straight stitch, you wanna turn that on because that is going to keep you from accidentally choosing a zigzag or a wider stitch. So that's a good safety feature to have. And even if you did choose one of these others, it would only let you do a straight stitch. But also notice you can't do twin needle, so twin needle is also grayed out when you have stitch with safety on. Now, why would you want to have that straight stitch needle plate? I found it very useful for slinky type fabrics that tend to get pushed down as you're sewing into the nice wide zigzag plate. So having a straight stitch needle plate can help prevent that. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that off. Now, the next one down is the audible alarm, and that's for if you, um, you can turn that off if you want your machine to be quiet. Now I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna show you. When I go up here, it's not making any noise, but if I go and turn that back on, go up here, so it gives me that little beep. That's sort of a warning beep that means you can't do that. Uh, so my up arrow has come to the limit of where it can go. The audible beep, I like having that on, but some people don't like it, and it's up to you. You can turn it off if you want to. Now, as you're moving the scroll up and down, you can actually press and hold. Now, for contrast, that happens, that has to do with your uh, LCD screen here. You can move the contrast with these arrows here. You can either step it along, or you can press and hold to get to where you want it to go a little quicker. The numbers don't change as long as you're pressing and holding, but as soon as you let your 
your finger off the button, it does. I'm gonna go back to zero because I kind of like it right about like that. <clears throat> now, the screen kind of depends on your preference, but it also might depend on the ambient light in the room, whether you're sewing at nighttime or you're sewing during the day with bright light. That can help with the uh, visibility of the screen. Next down, we have language, your preferred language. If you want to sew in Spanish and have your all your commands in Spanish or in German or Dutch or a lot of other languages, you can do that right there using the arrows to change. Next one down is software version, and that just tells um, you or the mechanics or whatever what the software is in this machine. So that is your settings menu. And again, to get back out of that, you can leave this uh, cursor in any place you want and just go right back into sewing. That settings, if this has been a helpful video for you, give us a thumbs up. And if you have comments or questions, you can leave those in the area down below. We have lots of other videos on this machine and on other machines here on our Montevilla YouTube channel. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye.